One of the key differences between the kick serve and the flat serve is the direction that you swing and pronate when you make contact with the tennis ball. And for the flat serve, what you're trying to do is pretty much swing through the ball. You want to slap it at contact, hit it clean, and come through the ball. But for a kick serve, now what you're trying to do is swing across it. You're not swinging in the same direction you are for a flat serve. You're swinging across it and trying to brush up and across the back of the tennis ball, put spin on the ball so that it gets pulled into the service box and then it bounces funny. So again, to reiterate, as opposed to coming through the ball and slapping it for a flat serve, you want to come across and up against the back of the tennis ball with a kick serve. Let's take a look at the difference in the direction you swing when you hit a kick and when you hit a flat. We've got Frank split here side by side. Serve closest to me is the kick. The one further away is the flat serve. And if we watch his flat serve first, when he winds up and he swings, his arm is moving into the court. Now if we watch him hit a kick serve, when he swings, he's now swinging more across the tennis ball. Let's rewind them, watch them side by side, and you can see clearly with the kick serve here, his arm is moving in a different direction than it is when he's hitting a flat serve. It's moving more across the ball and not through it. Now let's take a look at their contact points real quick because this is critical. The direction his racket strings are facing when he hits the ball are more or less the same. They're facing the direction he wants to hit it. So even though he's swinging in different directions, his strings are facing the direction he wants to hit the ball, and that's key. Let me expand upon this last point because it's a critical, critical element of the kick serve. Because my strings need to face the direction I'm hitting the tennis ball, that means that the timing of my pronation is going to be different between the kick serve and the flat serve. For instance, if I'm trying to get my palm to face the camera, the amount I have to pronate, the timing of my pronation is different if I swing straight at the camera as opposed to across my body. Now my timing is a little bit different to get my palm facing the camera. It varies from here to here. And that same concept applies to a flat serve and a kick serve. You time the pronation differently so that you get to a point, your point of contact, and the strings are facing the same direction for the kick and the flat. Let's now take a look at Oliver's kick serve and his flat serve side by side. His kick serve is the one closest to me and see how the brushing action of the kick serve is a little bit different than the slapping motion of the flat serve. With the flat serve, he swings pretty much straight through the tennis ball and he hits it square. But with the kick serve, again, he's swinging in a different direction now, across the ball. And when he hits it, he's brushing up against the back of the tennis ball. He's not hitting it clean, so to speak. Let's freeze these two serves at contact real quick because I want to talk about one more important point. And that is, with the kick serve, you want to let the ball drop slightly more than you would with the flat serve. And you can see the ball's a little bit lower when he's hitting his kick. And the reason is, you want to be able to swing up across the tennis ball. And if you hit the ball as high as you can reach, you won't be able to be swinging up a little bit when you make contact.